Hello, this is Kimberly Wilson, and welcome to episode 469 of Tranquility Du Jour, bringing you tranquility since 2005. Tranquility Du Jour is a series of nourishing conversations about living a full and meaningful life with doses of tranquility. Sign up to receive love notes in your inbox and you'll get exclusive content, personal updates and giveaways not shared anywhere else, along with access to tranquil treasures, an array of audio, video and PDFs. You can find this in the show notes, KimberlyWilson.com slash 469. You can subscribe to Tranquility Du Jour in your favorite podcast app, such as Apple Podcast or Overcast, and make sure you never miss an episode, or visit KimberlyWilson.com slash podcast for more episodes and the Tranquility Du Jour app. If you have a moment to pin a review on iTunes of the show or a review of any of my books over on Amazon, you may just hear it on the show. Julie writes, you will love Kimberly's authenticity, wisdom, questions, ideas, and delicious bite-sized tips. Grateful to be one of our guests and definitely recommend this to anyone looking to add tranquility, peace, calm, and bliss into your life. Thank you, Julie. And also share any of your takeaways by using hashtag TDJ podcast. I love hearing what you take away from these episodes. So today, this is actually a request from a listener who wanted to know more about returning to ballet as an adult. So I'm chatting with Courtney Jen, who is a ballerina and works at the Washington Ballet. So learn how to get started, what to expect, how to gain confidence, and more. We have a couple events still happening this year. At the very end of the year, we have our New Year's Eve mini retreat happening at Yoga Works DuPont. And then also on New Year's Day is the New Year's Salon happening in my office in DuPont Circle. We've had people fly in for this, drive in for this, so it's an absolute treat and would love to have you with us. Courtney Ginn is a native of Winchester, Virginia, where she received her early training from Rostikov's Academy of Ballet. She received additional training through summer intensives at places such as Central Pennsylvania Youth Ballet, Point Park University, Richmond Ballet, and the University of the Arts. Ginn graduated cum laude from Bucknell University with a degree in business administration and a minor in dance. Her career in the dance field has been multifaceted, including teaching various dance styles in studios, schools, and in collaboration with community partners throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. Learn more in the show notes. Welcome, Courtney. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks so much for being here. You know, it's funny. It was back a few months ago, and I was hosting an online program, and I asked, I was like, oh, what are people curious about from a, you know, podcast perspective? What topics are you interested in? And somebody wrote in, and they were like, I want to return to ballet as an adult, and I'd love for you to interview someone about you know, the recommendations and how you get started. And so thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us, because I think this is, you know, even listeners who are like, I'm not interested in ballet. I think this applies to so much that we may be open or wanting to take on as an adult, but yet not feeling like, oh, we're just five and we can show up in this little pink outfit and and kind of flail around and everything's fine, right? It's like a whole different world when you're an adult. Absolutely. Starting something new as an adult, it often comes with a lot of anxiety and nerves. Um, and we see that a lot when students are coming in for their first ballet class um, as an adult. So I think it's a really great topic. And like you said, it applies to really anything you're interested in starting new um, as an adult. Tell us a little bit, actually, before we dive in about your ballet background. Have you been dancing since you were four? I have, yeah. I um, was pretty lucky and kind of found dance um, as a three-year-old just because my um, my cousin actually owned a dance studio in Winchester, Virginia, where I was born and raised. And I started then and fell in love. And it's been my lifelong passion. Um, and I've been dancing for 26 years. I still dance currently and take ballet class weekly. Um so yeah, I've been very, very fortunate. Um, I trained uh, in classical ballet as a young dancer. And then when I 
transitioned and went to college and kind of in my adult life, I have become more of a modern and contemporary dancer, but certainly have an appreciation for ballet and the foundation it gave me in my training. And now I have the the true pleasure really of working for the Washington Ballet and managing their adult program classes. So I've I've been able to see a lot of adult students come to ballet um, for their very first time and taking their first classes. What would you recommend? Because I know you probably get a ton of calls and a lot of people stopping by your office and asking questions. But what do you recommend for adults when they are interested in getting started with ballet? Because it is, it's like, where do you even begin? Absolutely. Yeah. So I I always recommend that people look at the schedule first um, and really check the levels, read the descriptions of class levels um, and know that typically when you're attending a drop in class, which is what you'll find most often, that there's some fluidity to those levels. Teachers um, are experts at what they do and they'll be able to look at who's in the classroom and, and tailor the class to who's there. But if you're coming for the first time, you're going to want to look for an intro level. Um, what we call that here at the Washington Ballet is a beginner one level. The other thing that I think is important to do is, is to look for workshops and really uh, specific times where um, your local ballet company will offer workshops for beginners. A lot of times here that's called brand new to ballet. Um, And that's a great, really focused time where you're getting maybe five weeks of intense time in a smaller group. Usually those workshops um, move at a slower pace, too, which is is really helpful for someone new to the art form. Um, Another thing, too, that um, sometimes I will suggest for people, depending on their learning style, is to maybe do one or two private lessons. Um, again, it's just a more focused time with one-on-one with a teacher where you can ask every burning question that you may have and you feel like you don't have time to ask during a, a drop-in class or a workshop. Yeah, those are great ideas because, you know, oftentimes, and I experienced this with a hip-hop class once, you show up to a beginner and you're like, this is so not beginner, right? And, and then you leave just feeling defeated. I think that's pretty normal and you have to keep coming back, but there's going to be people in your class that are really more advanced and um, it can be quite intimidating. So I love the idea of starting with a workshop or a series and sometimes schedules just don't allow for that. So, you know, just being prepared that, okay, you're going to be in a group that even though it's labeled beginner, there's going to be a lot of different levels in there and to be gentle with yourself. Absolutely. And I think, you know, if you are showing up to a class and it it feels more advanced than you anticipated, what I suggest for every person coming into a new class or even just trying um, a new teacher, maybe it's a brand new teacher, you've been attending a different class, is try to say hello to the teacher, introduce yourself, let them know, hi, I'm new, Um, I'm going to do my best today, or even just say, hey, I've never taken your class, um, but I'm excited to be here. Letting, cueing the teacher into that um, is really helpful. Um, They can help guide you a little bit closer um, if they know that at the forefront. Um, The other thing that I I do as a dancer myself in class and when I've taught ballet and other styles of dance, I encourage students to go shopping. Um, And what I mean by that is is watch, look around the room, notice other students that are are doing things that that you want to buy. Uh, go shopping in terms of the teacher too. observe what the teacher is doing and buy that. Maybe it's how they're doing a tondu or how they're holding their arms. Really be as observant as you can. Um, and and to another kind of in line with that is, is just be really smart. Um, and what I mean by that is if you know you have an injury or if you try something and it doesn't feel right, you know your body better than anyone else, better than any student or teacher in the room, modify if you need to. And do not, do not hesitate to do that. Um, you can always ask questions um, afterward and, and let the teacher know what you experienced and find a better way to approach that movement and that's healthy and sustainable. Um, and that avoids injury. I kind of giggled to myself whenever you said go shopping, because I was like, oh, yes, it's so fun. It really helps you get ready for the class. But, you know, I thought you meant like literally like get your little dance clothes. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> so I appreciate what you're saying, but I remember one time in the dressing room, some of us were like, oh my gosh, the best part of ballet is like getting dressed for it. You know, it's just so fun and feminine. And I tend to wear all black. So it's like black with pink accents. I don't know. It just, it feels so, so, um, I guess feminine really is the best word, but light and flowy and fun. Um, it really is one that I, I feel like, you know, you get all these like sweet little skirts and I don't know, there's something about it that is, is helpful to kind of get you in the mindset, you know, it's like getting these pieces of clothing on. Yeah. And I think that's a great point is that a lot of us, um, you know, feel like shopping is a fun thing to do. So if you take that fun and that joy of actual literal shopping into the classroom, it can actually um, make the situation feel um, less stressful or like there's less pressure um, rather than looking at a student and thinking, oh, they're so advanced. Um, I, I will never dance that way. Think of it more as shopping. Oh, like that looks nice. I'd like to buy that, which is, is way more fun. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things that uh, is helpful, I think, to, is to know what to expect. So, you know, for a, a new person, a brand new or maybe danced as a child, but, you know, hasn't done it in a while, what would or should someone expect kind of showing up into an open class? Absolutely. So when you walk into um, an open ballet class, the first thing that you'll usually see happen is um, the teacher will greet the pianist. And it's helpful to know that there are actually two teachers in the room, at least with um, all of our classes here at the Washington Ballet, there, there will be a pianist and um, our faculty member who's uh, teaching the technique part of the class. Um, and then from there on, what you'll see happen is you'll start with a bar warm up. Um, and what that usually includes is it will start with plies, it moves into tendus and to dégagés, which are lower movements um, kind of on the floor or just barely off the floor. Eventually, you'll be working your way, um, still staying at the bar, but into larger movements. Um, usually, that includes an adagio and a grand bat ma combination. Again, just larger movements still at the bar. After you spend that time, which usually depending on how long the class is, it's about 45 minutes that you'll spend at the bar. Then you move away from the bar into some center exercises. Um, that can include petit allegro or small jumps. It may still include some tendus. Um, after you do the center portion, you usually will move across the floor, something larger that travels, um, which uh, typically for beginner level classes, that might be a, a waltz step. Um, so that's kind of the, the breakdown of how a class will work um, in your beginner levels. I think the scary piece for a lot of us at the very beginning is that center work. And not just like all of us in the center, but where we all go to the corner and we move across the floor. Um, it's kind of like the hip hop class that I'm still traumatized by, right? It's, you know, you know, everyone performs, you know, the little bit that we learn while half the class watches. And it's just so intimidating. Um, so what would you say for people who who, you know, it just feel, and, and the thing to, I think to keep in mind listeners is nobody in there is perfect, right? So there's, there are always all sorts of levels. And so what would you say about how best to gain confidence of going across the floor, even though you may have no idea what you were just taught? Sure. Yeah. It's, it's okay to make mistakes. And I think we have to remind ourselves that, um, uh, just an observation being in DC, we have a lot of really type A people and, you know, we, we don't want to make mistakes and we're used to being good at our job and kind of perfectionist, but it's okay. It's okay to make mistakes and they will happen when you're trying something new. Um, the other thing for, for uh, building confidence uh, with coming to the classes is, is showing up. Sometimes that's half the battle and really making class a part of your regular schedule and kind of carving out that time for a weekly class. If you can commit to one class per week with the same teacher for a few months, that is usually helpful. Teachers have a specific style. And the more you come to a certain teacher, you'll start to understand their style and the kind of movements that, and exercises that they're giving in class, which will help with building confidence. Um, another thing that you touched on earlier with going shopping is is wear clothing that makes you feel good. I get a lot of questions about, you know, ah, I'm, I'm coming for the first time and everybody has a leotard on in that room. I don't have a leotard. What do I do? 
you do not have to have a leotard, um, at least in our classes here. There's no dress code for adults. Um, and anything that makes you feel comfortable and that you can move in is perfect for class. Um, also, with uh, gaining confidence, usually having more information can help you build that confidence. So don't be afraid to ask questions in class. Um, asking A lot of times students feel like they can't speak in a ballet class, that it's just the teacher giving information, but it is totally fine to raise a hand, ask a question when you need clarification. And again, it just is a way to get more information and build some confidence. Yes, I, I think um, these are great reminders with regard to, okay, how do I progress? And I think the piece about going to the same teacher regularly can be so helpful because everyone's going to have a similar or, or a different style, um, but it's going to be similar with every class uh, that they teach. And so it does, I think it knowing what to expect really ups that uh, comfortable muscle. Absolutely. And I also see um, a lot of beginner students get kind of overwhelmed at the very beginning of their training because there's new terminology. You're moving your body in a way you've never moved it before. You're also, a lot of students um, have never had to interpret music the way that you do in a ballet class. So it's, it's very overwhelming. Um, so I think really start when you start out, focus on some attainable goals, setting maybe one or two goals for yourself that are very simple and straightforward um, can help you feel like you're progressing and also help build that confidence. And, you know, the piece too about what to wear, I just wanted to comment on also because, you know, with yoga, we would always encourage people wear something fitted, right? So if you show up in a big baggy t-shirt, you totally can, but something that is fitted, I think is just a little bit easier, A, for the teacher to see your alignment. And um, I don't know, there's something really comforting, I think, about fitted pieces that just, it's almost like you feel a little swaddled. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. The same principles um, that apply to yoga apply for, for dance is that you form fitting is always better. It, it also is, is a safer option. It really lets the teacher see your body and see your movement and help you with placement and alignment throughout the class. Now, is there anything else with regard to what we should wear or bring to class? Yeah, aside from, um, you know, clothing, which we just talked about, is um, you definitely want to think about your footwear be before coming into class. Um, ballet slippers are are the best option for taking a ballet class, and you can get them at a local dancewear store. You can also order them online um, in either canvas or uh, leather, leather, and either one is is fine. Um, a lot of times I get students coming in for the first time and they may not realize that they, they need ballet shoes or they're still kind of on the fence about their ballet experience in general and they're not sure if they want to invest the money in a pair of ballet shoes. Um, and really for a beginner class, socks are okay. Um, you can take the class in socks. Um, they can be a little slippery when you get to center, so even going barefoot in center for your first class um, can, can be okay. Um, but eventually, if you're noticing that you are coming to class more regularly, I would highly recommend um, investing in the ballet shoes. One other piece is um, you want to think about your hair and securing your hair back. If you have long hair or even short hair, you're going to want to pull it back up off your face. Um, you know, typically for a ballet class, you're going to want to pull it into a bun. But for, for adults taking class, even a ponytail or as long as it's away from your face, um, you, you are fine. Yeah, that's a great reminder too. It's um, it's similar to to yoga. You know, if you are moving around, it's nothing's worse than having your hair kind of flopping everywhere. Absolutely, and it can also be dangerous once you're starting to turn in a ballet class. You're going to want your eyes completely uncovered so that you can see and spot. The other piece that just comes to mind that I always bring to class is just a water bottle. Yeah, that's a great reminder. I've also seen a lot of folks bring um, a towel as well. Um, again, that's just on your own personal preference. If you know that you're someone that, that sweats a lot, you're, you can bring a towel just like you would to a heated yoga class. Um, you may also see folks in class um, bring like equipment like a tennis ball or a foam roller or things like that. And those things are great to bring uh, to class if you know you can come 15 minutes early to warm up. 
those are really great tools for, for warming up. What would you recommend? So say we are doing this weekly class with the same teacher, you know, and kind of growing that capacity. What can we do, say, at home in between these weekly classes to begin to grow? Yeah, there are a lot of great things that you can do at home. Um, in terms of preparing your body, there's a lot of cross training that's helpful. Um, and a lot of them I do myself in between classes and rehearsals still is um, if you have a pil- Pilates, yoga, gyrotonics, all of those things are really great and you can find good online videos um, or if you, you know, have a local yoga studio or Pilates studio you can go to. Um, I also suggest for people to, to do a little bit of cardio in between coming to classes. Um, once you get to the center part of class, it does require a good bit of stamina. So a little bit of cardio training in between classes can also help. Um, there are a lot of really, really wonderful online videos that you can find that are are helpful that can that you can do at home really easily. Um, one that I have used in the past is the New York City Ballet workout video. There's a dancer, Catherine Morgan, who also has a lot of ballet workouts um, online that are all free and really easy easy to access. So I would um, take advantage of some of those. Is she ballet beautiful? You know, I think she might be. Yeah. She the one who trained Natalie Portman? Uh, I'm not sure exactly. I'm looking it up right now just to check. Yeah, because I know Ballet Beautiful. I follow her online, but, you know, I don't know what her name is, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah, actually, that doesn't look like Catherine Morgan. Catherine Morgan is um, a dancer who she danced professionally and then got very, very sick. Um, and wasn't able to return to the stage, but has since kind of built a lot of like uh, workout ballet workout training has kind of built this online presence presence that's been pretty popular. Good to know. And listeners, I will put a link in the show notes to Catherine and Ballet Beautiful. Um, what about, okay, this is um, a tricky question, but I'm so curious personally, is what would you recommend for people wanting to transition from ballet slippers to point? So I still have my toe shoes from circa many years ago, but believe it or not, they fit like a glove. And, you know, when would you say it's time that you could start at least playing in them or dabbling in them or bringing them to class and doing some of the class in them? Yeah, it's it's hard to give an exact timeline for that kind of thing. And, you know, coming back to point as an adult or even trying point for the first time as an adult can be a pretty tricky thing to navigate. Um, it's really, really important that uh, dancers have the appropriate foot and ankle strength to sustain point shoes um, because it it is a lot of work um, and it also takes um, a lot of careful attention to alignment when you're in point shoes. Um, So I would recommend taking, uh, if if it's available or even again using some of the online resources to do some some pretty serious work uh, with foot and ankle strengthening um, and kind of building those exercises into your warm up and into your weekly routine. Um, The next thing I would do is to talk to a trusted instructor, talk to the person, you know, if you've been attending that same regular class every week, talk to that teacher and let them know that you're interested in coming back to point or trying point for the first time and listen to their suggestions for, for how to do that and maybe if it's appropriate to start wearing your point shoes in their class. Um, usually when people are trying point for the first time or coming back to it after a long hiatus, um, you're going to want to only wear your point shoes at the bar. You'll feel way more stable in doing that. Um, a lot of things, a lot of times too, uh, with adults, uh, interested in point shoes is that you'll start looking online and you see point shoes that you can order. Do not order your first point, uh, first pair of point shoes online you absolutely want to go to a local dance store and get fitted properly for shoes. Um, and even even if you're if you have your old pair of point shoes, it may be worth going back and, and double checking that you're wearing a shoe that is is good for your foot and is going to be um, healthy for your alignment. Um, and like I said, for beginners, you definitely want to stay at the bar um, and, and do that for many weeks before you um, move into center work. 
Yeah, because you know what's really interesting about this too, right? As a child, you're just kind of tossed into point shoes and you're fine. I mean, not that you start there, but you know what I mean? It's um, it's different, right? As an adult. And so I think the reminder about strengthening the feet and ankles is uh, such an important piece. Absolutely. So one question I have for you, and this I think comes along the lines of, you know, having taught yoga for so many years and thinking of yoga really as a lifestyle, right? It's not just something... I mean, it can be for some people, but it's typically not just you rolling out your yoga mat and doing some sun salutations. It's uh, incorporating it into all you do. So I was curious, is there something that kind of translates similarly for ballet? You know, that's an interesting question that I personally had never really thought of just because um, dance and ballet has always been a part of my life since, you know, before I can remember even Um, And I think that there are so many lessons that you learn through taking ballet. Um, One that comes to mind is is discipline and commitment. Um, And those things, I think, are really easily translated. Um, Another one is is kind of grace. And I mean that both physically and also socially and how you treat people. I think there are really a lot of lovely people that work in this field and in ballet who are extremely generous and graceful with their time and with their talent. I see that all of the time with our teachers here and with our um, pianists here as well. The other thing, um, I think if you're, if you're looking to really incorporate ballet um, into your life a little bit more, I would definitely suggest, um, aside from just taking your your regular classes, is looking into ways and in how you can get more involved with your local ballet company. Um, usually, there's there's many ways, like becoming a donor or going to some special events, or even inviting friends and family to make it a part of their life too, and introduce them to something that you love and really care about. Um, you know, you can become a ticket subscriber and go see performances um, or go see a school's performances. You can volunteer. There are so many ways to stay involved with your local company that will really make uh, ballet feel like it's more a part of your life aside from just that that one or two regular classes per week. Yeah, I love those ideas. That's really great because, you know, that's really what got me going on ballet again. I had tried maybe about five or six years ago and I went to a few classes that were open level and it was just way too, way too tough. And so I like, oh, maybe I'm not meant to (laughs) return to ballet. But then I was in France and went to go see a ballet at Versailles. And I was like, okay, I'm back home that night, jet lagged. So I'm up at like 2 a.m., you know, Googling. Uh, Washington DC ballet classes. And so, you know, there's something about like seeing a performance, right, that gets you inspired, I think, to return to a, a former passion. Absolutely. Absolutely. So any final tips, Courtney, that you might have on how we can get started in a new movement practice such as ballet as an adult, anything we haven't covered? I think Aside from having fun, I think that's one thing that just continues to come up for me and for what I've seen as a dancer, as a teacher, as an administrator here running the adult program is that if you're coming to ballet as an adult, it's it's very likely that you don't intend to become a professional ballerina. Um, you've probably come for a variety of other reasons. Maybe maybe you always wanted to take ballet as a kid but didn't have the opportunity um, Or maybe you just love classical music and you just want to come and listen to the music and be in the space um, with that. Um, There are a lot of different reasons, but um, regardless of why you're coming to class, just remembering that it should be should be joyful um, and, you know, focus on your goals and ask questions and even talk to other students to just to help relieve some of the anxiety uh, that can come around with starting something new like this. Um, the other thing too, and I think it's just the, the world we live in now, we're, we're used to instant gratification. And I, I see a lot of people get very, very frustrated, um, with coming into to their ballet training and they, they're frustrated that it's not happening as fast as they would like it to. So just 
remember that everything takes time. And after 26 years of dancing myself, I there are so many things that I still want to work on and that I absolutely haven't mastered yet. So it, it takes a lot of time and, and just to be patient and know that that's one of the, the really beautiful things about ballet is that there's always something to work towards. And it it really kind of is this un, unattainable thing that we're always working towards the next level of excellence um, in our training. Beautiful. Great reminders. And yeah, about connecting with other people in class. There is something great about having someone who you're like texting, hey, are you going to class today? Are you going to class today? Because it's like an accountability system, which you're like, ah, I could sleep in or I could go see so-and-so because I told her I was going to be there. Absolutely. Yes. Definitely use the buddy system. That that always helps. My last question for you, Courtney, is the name of this podcast is Tranquility Du Jour, right? So it's this idea of how do we have tranquility in our everyday? And I'm curious for you, what do you do? Mm, yeah, great question. I use the Headspace app <laughs> and I, I try to meditate at least once a day um, to find some, some peace and tranquility throughout my day. I I'm also um, a yoga teacher, so teaching yoga and also practicing yoga is something that helps me um, feel like I have tranquility within my life and within each day. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you again for having me. Savvy sources. So mentioned in the podcast, Courtney is a fan of the Headspace app. She also mentioned Catherine Morgan, who I was not familiar with, but there's a link to her in the show notes, and I have signed up for her information. She seems fabulous. And then also Ballet Beautiful, who I mentioned, who helped train Natalie Portman for Black Swan. There's also a link to Washington Ballet adult classes, because I know some of you are in the D.C. area and may enjoy attending. And finally, let's connect. Browse my six books. Would love to know what you think of them, how and if they've had an impact. Follow along on Instagram for regular eye candy or over on Facebook at Tranquility Du Jour. Also on YouTube, you can check out the latest Tea with Kimberly video series. And then also see my ballet debut. Um, Tim and I joke, it's like my big moment. It was like 55 seconds. And I'll have a link to that in the show notes too. But it was a little um, ballet boot camp that I did back in June. And it was so much fun. And then also a link to shop seasonless, vegan, local friendly, eco friendly fashion tranquility. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you too are inspired to get moving and to possibly return to a childhood passion of ballet. Namaste. Thank you.